Thank you all for joining us. A warm welcome to you all. Let us light our chalice today, symbol of our religion, for peace in the world. Are there any announcements today? And again, uh, don't forget about the donations that we've been collecting the clothing, going over to the shelter, and it's been uh, well, welcomed over there with uh, great arms that we've been supporting and bringing stuff to them. So we still have stuff on the side and we'll still be delivering. Any more announcements? Are there any joys and concerns? Or concerns? Uh, Nancy and I were down here uh, at noon today for uh, our friend uh, W. Ross's uh, funeral service. Uh, <laughs> but uh, 
through it all right. And uh, it was actually a uh, launch at the Cove, which was a beautiful day. Uh, lots of people there talking about stuff. So, it was good to see how it was. May I have a joy and concern. As we know that uh, Reverend Dr. David H. Frankie had passed away recently. I miss him a lot. I think about him a lot because I do a lot of, of the uh, Course in Miracles. <coughs> and I was listening to some of his old tapes that he had done during the holidays. And he taught me a lot of things around Christmas. Um, things I never knew because I, I really never studied religion. But he used to do his little service at his house, and I used to record it. And he'd play his little guitar, sing his songs and stuff about the job of Christmas. And he taught me things, and I listened and I recorded it. And I've been listening this week and the last couple of weeks, listening to some of his services. He's an amazing man, the stories that he had told. I'm going to miss him very much. Every day I think about it because no matter where I go, I still think of calling Dave for answers to a question I might have. Unfortunately, it's, it's been tough. And uh, not having connection with the family and stuff it makes me even harder because I'm not sure how to grieve about something like this. He was, he was a psychologist, but he wasn't my psychologist, but he was my friend. And he gave me a lot of hope about the things I was going through with homelessness and, and dealing with struggles. And he never judged me. He just said, don't worry. The other day will come and you'll see and you'll rise to the top. And today I know that, I remember that one story he said when he was at Madison Square Garden and he met uh, the Reverend uh, the Billy Graham. And uh, he was eight years old, and he told that story all the time. And I remember it because he said that day changed his life. He went down there to the stage to meet Billy Graham and touched his hand and kissed his ring. And he was on that journey all these years, doing what he wanted to do. And he did. He traveled the world. He spread his word around to many, many people and touched many, many people's lives. I was blessed to be his friend. He's still my friend. He'll always be in my heart. And I feel that today has been a difficult one because I was thinking about it all day long while coming here and thinking about David. But he taught me. And with that education and what he taught me about religion and about who I am, I was so proud to have him as a reverend and as a psychologist, as a friend, as a buddy, as somebody else. I'll miss you, David. I know you're looking down on us. God bless you. For our opening words, let us do them together. Number 616 in your hymnal. For so the children come by Sophia Lyon Foss. For so the children come, and so they have been coming. Always in the same way they come. No angels herald their beginnings. No prophets predict their future courses. No wise men see a star to show where to find the day that will save humankind. Yet each night a child is born is a holy night. 
fathers and mothers sitting beside their children's cribs feel glory at the sight of a life beginning. They ask, where and how will this new life end, or will it ever end? Each night a child is born is a holy night, a time for singing, a time for worship. Let us sing our first carol together, number 241, In the Bleak Midwinter. I just have a few words, and I call them orienting words. For today's Christian world, Christmas, the time of Jesus' birth, is a time of peace, enjoyment, and above all, hope. Jesus' birth, or the birth of a Messiah, a leader, or savior, was foretold by many prophets in Jewish scripture. Here is Jim to tell us about the prophecy of Isaiah. Excuse me, excuse me, Jim. May we trouble you to come up? Yes, because um, it will record better. Okay. Thank you. Okay, this is Isaiah chapter 11, verse 1 through 9. A shoot will come up from the root of Jesse, and a branch will bear fruit. The Spirit of the Lord will rest on him, giving wisdom and understanding, counsel and awareness of the Lord. And he will delight in the awareness of the Lord. He will not judge by what he sees with his eyes or what he hears with his ears, but with righteousness he will judge the needy, with justice he will give decisions for the poor of the earth. Righteousness will be his belt and faithfulness the sash around his waist. The wolf will live with a lamb 
and a little child will lead them. The cow will feed with the bear, their young will lie down together, and the lion will eat straw like the ox. The infant will play near the cobra's den, and the young child will put its hand into the viper's nest. They will neither harm nor destroy any on my holy mountain, for the earth will be filled with the knowledge of the Lord as the waters cover the sea. So ends Isaiah. I don't think he's saying to actually go put your hand into the vipers. Uh, that, that would be pushing it a little. Two fifty-three. Two fifty-three. I'm here to read Luke 1, 26 to 35 to 38. In the sixth month of the angel Gabriel was sent from God to a city of Galilee named Nazareth to a virgin betrothed to a man whose name was Joseph of the house of David and the virgin's name was Mary. And he came to her and said, Hail, O favored one, the Lord is with you. But she was greatly troubled at the saying and considered in her mind what sort of greeting this might be. And the angel said to her, Do not be afraid, Mary, for you have found favor with God. And behold, you will conceive in your womb and hear a son, and you shall call his name Jesus. He will be great, and he will be called the Lord of God, the Lord the, the, and the 
Lord God will give to him the Son of Most High and the throne of the father David, and he will reign over the house of Jacob forever. And of his kingdom, there will be no end. And Mary said to the angel, how could this be since I have no husband? And the angel said to her, the Holy Spirit will come upon you and the power of the Most High will overshadow you. Therefore, the child to the be born will be called, will called holy and the son of God. And behold, your king's woman Elizabeth in her old age has also conceived a son, and this is the sixth month with her who was called barren. For with God, nothing will be impossible. And Mary said, Behold, I am the handmaid, I am the handmaid of the Lord. Let it be to me according to the word. And the angel departed from her. Christmas song, and actually the tune seems to have been adapted from an old English folk tune. Couldn't tell you what that tune was exactly. So anyway, this, uh, who would think that what was needed, and this was composed by some folks in the Iona colony, uh, which is an ecumenical colony or <coughs> folks in Scotland. Uh, this group is uh, sort of loosely associated with the Church of Scotland, which evidently is quite different than the Church of England, but <laughs> I didn't know that. So well, anyway, uh, who would think that what was needed? <laughs> Transform the 
Our next reading is from Luke. It is the newly revised standard version, and it's about Mary's response to the announcement of the child and what it means to her. When Mary went to see her pregnant cousin Elizabeth, Elizabeth's child leapt with joy in her womb at the recognition that Mary was carrying a special child. Elizabeth acknowledged that Mary is a blessed woman carrying a blessed child. And Mary responded and said, my soul magnifies the Lord and my spirit rejoices in God, my savior, for he has looked with favor on the lowliness of his servant. Surely from now on, all generations will call me blessed for the mighty one has done great things for me and holy is his name. His mercy is for those who fear him from generation to generation. He has shown strength with his arm. He has scattered the proud in the thoughts of their hearts. He has brought down the power from their thrones and lifted up the lowly. He has filled the hungry with good things 
and sent the rich away empty. He has helped his servant Israel in remembrance of his mercy, according to the promise he made to our ancestors, to Abraham and to his descendants forever. And now, hymn number 225, Come, O Come, Emmanuel. This next reading is the Magnificat by Lynn Unger. My soul doth magnify the Lord, said Mary, under circumstances which make it something of a startling utterance. Not I accept the will of the Lord, not I bow before the Lord, not even I give thanks to the Lord. No, Mary, this young woman, presumably unfamiliar with angels or divine voices of any kind, let alone those pronouncing that salvation should grow inside her ordinary flesh, this woman who may be innocent but hardly seems naive, says something remarkable. My soul magnifies the Lord, who I am. What I do, how I choose makes God bigger, as if God were to slip between microscopic slides and appear in never-before-seen detail, which is, of course, exactly what happens. Somehow, in being magnified, God gets small, small enough to sleep amongst the straw and the scent of farm animals. God magnifies, becomes particular, tangible, urgent as a hungry child. And Mary, like so many women before her and after, 
puts the baby to her breast, where they both grow vast in one another's eyes. In 246, a little time passing. In those days, a decree went out from the Emperor Augustus that all the world should be registered. This was the first registration and was taken while Quirinius was governor of Syria. All went to their own towns to be registered. Joseph also went from the town of Nazareth in Galilee to Judea, to the city of David called Bethlehem because he was descended from the house and family of David. He went to be registered with Mary, to whom he was engaged and who was expecting a child. While they were there, the time came for her to deliver her child, and she gave birth to her firstborn son and wrapped him in bands of cloth and laid him in a manger because there was no place for them in the inn. The next hymn is number 245. Joy to the world. Thank you. 
And there were shepherds living out in the fields nearby, keeping watch over their flocks at night. An angel of the Lord appeared to them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were terrified. But the angel said to them, don't be afraid. I bring you good news that will cause great joy for all the people. Today in the town of David, a savior has been born to you. He is the Messiah the Lord. This will be a sign to you. You will find a baby wrapped in cloths and lying in a manger. Suddenly, a great company of the heavenly host appeared with the angel, praising God and saying, glory to God in the highest heaven and on earth peace to those on, on whom his favor rests. And the next hymn is 231. Angels we have heard on the night. <laughs> After those rousing carols, <laughs> now let us have a quiet moment and go inwards in prayerful meditation. And breathe together, breathe in love and breathe out peace. Breathe in love and breathe out peace in this place now. Breathe in love and breathe out peace. 
Breathe in love and breathe out peace for the Ukraine. Breathe in love and breathe out peace for Gaza and Israel. May we set our hearts towards peace that the words of the prophet Micah will come true. One day they will beat their swords into plowshares and their spears into pruning hooks. Nation shall not live up, not, not lift up sword against nation, neither shall they learn war anymore. Amen. My reflection is called the Prince of Peace Within. You remember that Jesus said, I am in you and you are in me? Christmas does something special to us, especially after hearing the old, old story and singing the songs. Really, it warms our hearts, doesn't it? I think you must have heard the story of the Christmas truce that spontaneously occurred during World War I. The war began in July of 1914. The slogan amongst the troops was, we'll be back for Christmas. But the war in Belgium was still raging in December on Christmas Eve. As dark fell, the British troops saw little lighted Christmas trees appearing on the German trenches opposite them. And they could hear the sound of Christmas carols and people shouting joyfully. Some of the British thought this is a good idea. And when they heard a German call in English, meet us halfway, some of them did. And then more of them, until they were exchanging cigarettes and liquor and showing photos of their family, the British with the Germans. The next day was Christmas Day. Someone produced a soccer ball and they kicked around the ball amongst the two sides laughingly. Then they agreed to bury their dead before the conflict would begin again. Not every battal battalion along the Western Front participated, but enough did for many soldiers to write home about the remarkable thing that had occurred. I don't know about you, but I give more money to charity in the month of December hoping that everyone has what they need. Christmas does something special for us to open our hearts. And this is what happened in Belgium in 1914. They could not have Christmas, even in the trenches. Yesterday evening, there was just nothing to watch on television. Isn't it true nowadays? We'd, we'd even already seen what was on the Hallmark Channel. So, we ended up watching an episode of Hawaii Five-0. <clears throat> it was about a renowned hitman who worked for organized crime. He killed people. It turned out he suddenly couldn't kill anymore. Instead, he arranged for his victims and their families to hide, rather like a private, a private witness protection program on another island of Hawaii. But the crime boss finally found out and began hunting the hitman. It turned out that years before, the hitman 
had a heart replacement. He figured that the new heart influenced him not to kill. Well, this melted the hearts of the detectives and they helped him escape the, murder, the mob killers. But he had to go to prison, however. Jesus has given us some precise and radical teachings on being a disciple of peace. One teaching is turn the other cheek when we're attacked. He knew this was a new and daring teaching, so he precedes this by saying, it was said to you of old, an eye for an eye, a tooth for a tooth. But I say to you now, turn the other cheek. He also told us, you were told to love your neighbor and hate your enemies. I say to you now, pray for those who hurt you. Pray for those who hurt you. So that you will be children of your father in heaven. This is in the Gospel of Matthew. This is indeed a lofty goal. And yet, I wonder whether we should pray for those who harm others, pray that they should turn their hearts to peace. I recall many years ago suggesting this to the executive director of the Interchurch Council in New Bedford to pray for the gangs who were creating havoc for the youth of New Bedford. And he looked at me as though I had lost my mind. Hello, it's the teaching of Jesus. If Jesus were alive today, I believe he would counsel us to examine examine all the old teachings and the urges that and the urges that hurt others have as our guide he counsels a peaceful heart and peaceful actions i think saul of tarsus understood this clearly and so he had the churches he established greet one another with peace peace be with you and to encourage peace among their churchgoers and towards everyone they met, churchgoers or Gentiles. This is why I say it is a time of hope. I believe that one day we will not have to have a heart transplant in order to have a heart-centered life because it will slowly but surely dawn on all human beings that the road to happiness, or rather contentment, is a road to a more just world, where we share the necessities of life with all in need, and peace prevails naturally. When people have their needs met, peace prevails naturally. It may not happen in our lifetimes, but maybe in our next life, whatever that means to you. Here ends the reflection. Let the offering be received for the work of this church. Thank you.
come to our favorite part, Silent Night. So, uh, have we got the, all of the accoutrements of candle lighting? Oh, do we have the candles? And May the peace of the Christmas season be with us for many days to come. Amen.